So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day number 13 of Autodesk Fusion. Almost two full weeks in, and um, this what we're doing is I'm going to be working on uh, giving you some things that um, I find helpful when building parts in uh, any 3D modeling system, be it Inventor, Fusion, or something else, is that your, uh, your objects are made where it is through the point of origin rather than offset. So here's um, here's what I mean by that is what you can see here is I have a piece but my origin is not in the middle of my part now for reasons we don't quite get into just yet with dealing with um, you know joining pieces and making assemblies and constraints and uh, motions and automatas and things like that it's really helpful <clears throat> when you're making your pieces to be through the point of origin rather than um, off to the side. Because when you start doing your constraints, it's a whole lot easier to uh, flush your center planes rather than anything else. So what I'm gonna do is, over here, I'm gonna make this body disappear and I'm gonna start with a new body. So here's what I'm gonna do with this. I am going to make a new sketch and give Inventor, or sorry, a Fusion a little second to do it, fix it. And the type of rectangle I'm going to do here is a center rectangle. And what this does, it allows me to make my rectangle, but one of the geometric constraints is the center of that rectangle is on the point of origin. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just do a 30 by 30 uh, square. And I'm going to go ahead and just extrude this up. So now what you can already see is that my piece um, its base is through the point of origin and this will help me when I'm trying to uh, potentially make assemblies with this later on. So uh, to make this same piece uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, exactly what I did or pretty close to it with that other piece. Notice I'm now doing a different type of rectangle because um, I'm no longer needing to go through that origin. So based on what you're needing you might want to change your rectangle types. Uh, as far as figuring those out, you can um, just play around and tinker and, and uh, see what you got there. Um, what I'm going to do is just clean this up just a little bit. And I'm just going to trim trim some of these lines out of here. That way it makes my extrusion just a little bit easier. Uh-oh. See, I am already running into a little bit of a problem here. Um, Ah, we should be okay. Let's try this out. So I'm just, for the sake of teaching from here, I'm not going to be too worried about those pieces. But I should be able to click on all those faces. There we go. Bring it forward. Negative 10 millimeters. And what, we, what I've got now is I've got two different bodies in this same design. I've got body two, which the origin planes are in the middle of. Uh, my piece you can see right there and then I've got that first body whose who's, uh, origin planes are not through the middle of it when you're making assemblies um, and students are really encourage you on doing this go ahead and make your pieces where the the parts are going through those origin planes and not necessarily around them this will help you long scope because you're going to use these origin planes when making your constraints later on and it is super helpful rather than trying to figure out some offsets and it's really ugly and things like that. Um, so if everything is made through the point of origin, it really helps you out in the long run. Alrighty guys, that's going to be it for today and I will see you on the next video.